In this training video, you'll learn about your sailing environment, safety afloat and basic rules. You'll learn what to look for in a sailing area, what conditions and areas to avoid and how to gather weather and tide information. You'll see what clothing to wear as well as how to be towed by a safety boat. We'll also give you simple rules explanations. You'll see graphical representations of simple situations and we'll explain which is the give way vessel. Firstly, always wear a buoyancy aid or life jacket if you're either on or near the water and you should never sail alone. You must understand your ability level and respect the elements. Do not sail if the wind is strong until you've learned the basics on fair weather days. There's a recognised wind measurement scale. This is called the Beaufort scale. The blocks in the middle indicate the wind force strengths. You should limit your sailing to winds up to force 3 or 4. As your experience grows, you'll be able to cope with stronger winds. These flag shots indicate fair weather winds, and the water looks like this. This is an ideal wind condition to learn in. This flag indicates very rough weather, and you can see the flag is flapping violently, and this is what the water looked like on the same day. If faced with this situation, you must not go afloat. Do not sail in a thunderstorm. The mast is an excellent lightning conductor. If one arrives when you're afloat, you must return to shore. Before you go afloat, you must obtain a good weather forecast for your area, and if on the sea, the times of the next high water. Information on both these points is generally available online, in local media or even on a mobile phone application. Tide times are important to understand. The direction and speed the current flows varies depending on the time of high water and can exceed your boat speed, sweeping you out to sea if the wind drops. Tidal currents get particularly strong at harbour entrances and headlands, so avoid sailing in these areas. We assume that your boat is in a seaworthy condition and watertight. If you're in doubt, you must get the boat checked by a professional. It's a good idea to carry a paddle on board, which you can use if the wind drops, a long piece of rope to be used if you need to be towed. You should carry a sponge and a baler, and a small anchor like this is a good idea, as it'll help to hold the boat in position if the wind drops. Make sure that any loose items are tied on, so that you don't lose them if you capsize. Your boat should have at least two buoyancy tanks to keep you afloat. They're designed so that should one become hold, the boat will still float. The buoyancy tanks form the main body of the hull that you sit on, with an additional tank at the bow of the boat. Drainage holes are fitted at the back of the boat to allow you to drain any water that may collect in the buoyancy tanks while sailing. These holes are secured with bungs, which must be fitted before you go afloat. The boat won't sink if you don't fit the bungs, but it will fill with water and be very difficult to steer if you don't. You should never sail alone. Only sail in an area where somebody could come and assist you in the event of you getting into difficulties. A deserted and quiet beach may look an inviting area to learn in peace and quiet, but there's probably a good reason as to why no other boats are there. Strong tides and currents may exist, hazardous shipping may operate, unexposed rocks and sandbanks may also be a problem. You must choose a location where other boats are sailing. Sailing clubs are the perfect choice. What you wear is also very important. You must wear clothing to suit the climate in your particular situation, whether this be hot or cold. You must always wear a personal buoyancy aid or life jacket at all times when in the boat or near the water. A buoyancy aid is generally accepted as the most suitable for dinghy sailing as these jackets allow easy body movement and will keep you afloat. However, because of the design, you'll not float face up if you're knocked unconscious. A life jacket is the alternative, but these are cumbersome to wear aboard a dinghy. You must wear your buoyancy aid tightly so that you do not fall out of it when you fall in the water and it's important to wear it as the outermost garment to allow somebody to grab hold of it easily to help pull you back aboard after a capsize. 
Some people opt to wear safety helmets to protect them from bangs, usually from the boom. Ropes can burn your hands if you let them slide through your fingers. Gloves are therefore a good idea. If it's cold, you should wear a hat. We recommend that you use footwear with non-slip soles. Clothing made from man-made fibers are ideally suited for sailing, as these types of fabrics still offer warmth when wet and they dry quickly. You should avoid cotton or wool-based clothing like jeans or heavy wool sweaters, as these are heavy and uncomfortable to wear when they're wet and take a long time to dry. To help keep you warm, waterproof tops are a good idea to keep the wind off. Waterproof trousers keep the wind and spray off your legs while sailing and also help to keep you warm. However, if there is the likelihood of a capsize, wetsuits are a good idea, especially if the weather is cool. Be careful of the sun's rays. The ultraviolet light will reflect off the surface of the water and the wind will cool exposed skin. This will mask the burning feeling. Be particularly careful on days when the sun is hazy. It will still burn you. Apply sun cream to exposed areas and also take it afloat with you. You should also take something to drink. If you need to attract the safety boat's attention, make large arm movements like this. If you need to be towed ashore, the safety boat crew will instruct you on what to do, but with the sails lowered, the crew should take the tow rope from the safety boat and wrap it completely around the mast like this and hold it tight. Do not tie this off. Raise the centerboard. The safety crew will then secure the tow rope. As the slack in the tow rope is taken up, the helmsman then steers to follow the safety boat. Near the shore, let go of the tow rope and use your paddle for the last little bit. If you need to be towed while sailing a single hander, wrap the tow rope completely around the mast and hold it in one hand and steer the boat with the other. Remove or fully raise the centerboard. If one person falls overboard in a two-hander, immediately the man goes overboard, the other person checks their position and takes control of the helm. Tack around and sail below the man overboard and approach on a close reach. Let the sails flap to control your speed, stopping by the man overboard. Help them aboard and sail away. Now let's look at rules. Rules are there for everyone's safety. We'll show you the basic rules you need to be aware of, but you need to be aware that these rules are only a small part of a lengthy international publication called International Regulations for Prevention of Collisions at Sea and includes rules for heavy commercial shipping. As a dinghy sailor, you need to only be aware of the most basic rules, but if you plan to race, further rules will also apply, which are beyond the scope of this video. When afloat, the priority of all vessels is to avoid a collision and any incident, so you must keep a good lookout at all times whilst sailing and be prepared to take avoiding action in good time. Don't forget to look under the boom as well as behind your back as boats can come at you from any angle. Be aware that the wind may restrict your ability to hear the sounds of approaching vessels and sailing boats in particular can be hard to hear. In most situations, sail has priority over power boats and they should keep out of your way. But you must keep out of the way of large commercial shipping or fishing vessels. They are often constrained by their draft or their manoeuvrability. You must also keep out of the way of any man-powered vessels like rowing boats. Any point of sailing where the wind is on the left-hand side of the boat is called port tack and is the give-way tack and is marked in red. Any point of sailing where the wind is on the right-hand side of the boat is called starboard tack, which is the stand-on tack marked in green. You must familiarize yourself with what point of sailing and what tack you're on at all times, as this has a direct bearing on whether you are the give-way vessel or not. If you're the boat on starboard, you can alert your position to oncoming traffic by shouting loudly, STARBOARD! but you must be prepared to take avoiding action if the boat on port does not respond. Let's take a look at some practical examples. Here, both boats are on close haul point of sailing. The boat in red is on port tack and is the giveaway vessel. The green boat is on starboard and is the stand-on vessel. The red boat must avoid the green boat by either steering behind the starboard boat 
or tacking onto starboard tack to match the green boat and sail alongside it. The same rule applies if you're sailing with the wind behind you. Once again, the boat in red is on port, so should avoid the boat in green, which is sailing on starboard. The red boat has the choice of turning behind the green boat or jibing onto starboard to sail alongside the green boat. Let's now look at when a close-hauled boat meets a boat sailing away from the wind. The red boat is close-hauled but sailing on port, so should avoid the green boat that is on a dead run on starboard. As before, the red boat must keep out of the way by either tacking out of the way like this or turning to steer behind the green boat. Let's look at this in reverse. Here, it's the boat that's sailing away from the wind that is on port tack, marked in red. And the other boat sailing close hauled is on starboard. Once again, the red boat must avoid the green boat by either steering behind it or turning onto the opposite jibe to sail clear. Here, we see two boats sailing on port. In this situation, it's the boat that has the wind behind it sailing down the screen that's the give-way vessel, so must take avoiding action, and steers behind the close-hauled boat to keep clear. Now, let's look at what happens when overtaking. Here, the overtaking boat must keep clear at all times by either sailing well to the windward side or by turning underneath and sailing well to the leeward side. Let's look at boats on converging courses. In this situation, it's the boat that's on the windward side that's the give way vessel and must adjust its course to avoid a collision or steer behind the other vessel. The rules we've just illustrated are the most common and most basic. Please be aware that other situations do exist and if in doubt, keep clear of other vessels to avoid collisions well in advance. Key learning points. Understand your level of ability. Respect the elements. Always wear a personal buoyancy aid. Never sail alone. Understand the tide times and weather forecast. Make sure your boat is seaworthy. Wear clothing to suit your particular environment. The wind can mask the power of the sun's rays. You should use sun cream to protect exposed skin areas. Rules are there for everyone's safety. You must know what tack you're on to understand who is the giveaway vessel in any particular situation. In general, the boat on port tack is the giveaway vessel and must take avoiding action. You must keep a good lookout at all times and be prepared to take immediate avoiding action, even if you appear to be in the right. Next steps. Watch this video as many times as is necessary to get a good understanding of what to be aware of with your sailing environment and rules afloat. Use the script and glossary to support your understanding. Familiarise yourself with websites that will give you information about the weather and tides in the area that you may sail in, so that you get used to reading and interpreting the information in different conditions from day to day. Practice being able to read the wind strength by fluttering flags and ripples on the water. And understand the basic rules of the road and avoid collisions.